All right, today we're going to take a look at new New York Giants safety, Xavier McKinney. In order to tell the story of McKinney, I think we first have to start by taking a look at the new coaching staff the Giants are going to have this year. They're led by new head coach Joe Judge, who worked at the University of Alabama from 2009 to 2011 under head coach Nick Saban, then moved to the New England Patriots under Bill Belichick from 2012 to 2019, and is now, in 2020, the New York Giants head coach. With him, he brought new defensive coordinator Patrick Graham, who crossed paths with Judge in New England from 2009 to 2015. Graham then went on to the Giants as D-line coach, went on to Green Bay as defensive run coordinator, spent the 2019 campaign as the defensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins, and is now back in New York under Joe Judge as the defensive coordinator. So in order to tell the story of McKinney, a safety from the University of Alabama, who played under Nick Saban, who worked with Joe Judge, well, I think we need to take a look at what Patrick Graham wants to do with the safety position. And again, he had exposure as a defensive coordinator last year, so we can look at exactly how he lined things up by looking at safety. Bobby McCain, 2015 fifth-round pick, who was projected as a corner but ended up playing safety last year for the Dolphins. So we just want to get a feel for what does Graham want out of the safety position. So in this case, we're going to see McCain end up taking the number two receiver here and this is going to show us that a safety in Graham's defense is not just going to be a center fielder. It's not just going to be a too high player. This is going to be somebody that has to understand how to work and relate to receivers. So number two goes out. He floats underneath number one, relates with eyes. So these are the kind of things that we're going to be looking at when we look at McKinney, kind of get a feel for what is this role going to be. Uh, I did get some notes from you guys that some of the fast forward rewind stuff got to be a bit much. So I'm going to try to take a little bit of a break on that one. Uh, but we'll, again, we'll bring these things forward. So again, we're taking a look here at 2019 Dolphins safety, Bobby McCain, to get a feel for what defensive coordinator Patrick Graham wants from the position. So again, we're going to see McCain align deep here. He's ultimately going to have the running back coming out of the backfield. So again, the way this defense runs, this safety position is not a one or not a one trick pony. This is a very vols, uh, versatile piece. If I can get my words together here. In this case, we see McCain falling off this tackle on Adrian Peterson. But you're going to see the depth and range that's expected from this position as a player that, again, initially aligns back here is actually going to be responsible for the running back. So, again, as the running back comes out of the backfield, McCain's going to have to read through this bunch set, find his threat, leverage it outside, and try to make an open field tackle. So moving forward here to game against the Buffalo Bills. Now we're going to see McCain again in a deep alignment, but he's ultimately going to be responsible for the number three receiver here. So they are going to have situations where their matchup principles, whether it be man match or zone match, are going to put them on wide receivers. And so you're going to see him have to drive down here when three breaks in and be in position to make a play. So again, all things that we're going to have to take a look at when we look at McKinney in terms of how does that relate to this Patrick Graham defense. So against the Pittsburgh Steelers here, wanted to point out the the pass rush, the or let me rephrase the blitzing that's going to be expected from this position. So you're going to see McCain here aligned outside the tackle, coming as the edge blitzer. So again, another principle for what Graham's going to want from this safety position. You're going to have to do a little bit of everything in order to be effective. Uh, we've seen a couple of different man principles where he ends up taking a certain receiver. Now we're seeing him come off the edge. We're also going to have to understand zone principles in this defense. So we're going to have McCain aligned to the top here. And you're going to see the receiver come underneath him after the motion. Colts have two receivers out here. McCain's ultimately responsible for the one coming on the drag route. He's a little bit late with his eyes and needs to react to that faster. And these are the zone principles that a safety is going to have to understand in this Patrick Graham, uh, New England Patriots um, derivation defense here. So again, McCain's aligned on the line of scrimmage. So we've seen deep alignments. Now we're seeing underneath alignments. Ultimately, he's going to be responsible for the receiver coming here across the field. So staying with this Colts game, Again, we're going to see McCain step down over number three, but be responsible again for a deep half. 
in the situation. So again, some of the things that we're going to need to see from this player is the ability to start with a tight alignment, bail out, and then read two to one up here in order to find the most dangerous threat and put himself in a position to leverage those routes. So all things, again, we're going to take a look at and see if McKinney brings that skill set immediately to the table. All right. We have another play here in this Colts game. Want to see him do one more piece of what they ask for here. And this is going to be ultimately matched up on the tight end. So we have the tight end here in the Y position in line. You're going to see McCain right above him. And ultimately, as two comes out, he's a little late again with his eyes, but he's going to be responsible for those body types. So we're going to see receiver body types, small and big. We're going to see tight end body types. We're going to see deep coverage. We're going to see man principles. We're going to see zone principles. We're going to see blitzing. There's a lot of things, clearly, they expect from this safety position. And then finally, the intelligence to know as a blitzer, when you're going to blitz the side of the back, what you're ultimately responsible for. So in this case, he's responsible for occupying that running back. So as he comes in, he's going to start to feel that running back decide whether or not he wants to leak out. And then he's going to sift off of that and stay with that running back and not let that running back become a check down option. So again, we're going to see McCain blitzing the running back. And then he's going to feel that running back towards the end of this play. Think about leaving and put himself in position to take that away. So hopefully by this point, you get a feel that there's a lot of expectation on this position here. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Xavier McKinney. And again, so many different things that he's expected to do here at Alabama. And you're going to see why this translates to this Patrick Graham, Joe Judge defense. So here you're going to see him relate to the running back coming out of the backfield. Little angle route. He gets leverage. He waits, and at this moment, you can see the quarterback is getting ready to release the ball. We're three yards separated. You're going to see his ability to plant and drive right here. Triggers downhill, gets his hands up, ultimately tips this ball up, and his teammate picks it off. So a heck of a play here. So let me pause this here. Number 15 is going to be who we're focused on. And you're going to watch the running back come out of the backfield. He's got eyes. He's got eyes, stays with leverage when the running back comes back in. He's out of the picture, but again, he's watching the quarterback's eyes, trying to figure out where the ball's coming. As soon as that ball goes up, McKinney's already downhill. You can see his hands getting involved there. Tip that ball up in the air. And teammates able to pick that off. Heck of a play. So now we're going to see them take on the national champions here. McKinney's going to be down near the line of scrimmage. LSU's got a bunch formation. Again, we talk about understanding zone principles. We want to see how they deal in these scenarios. In this particular case, he's going to be our edge rusher. We saw this against Pittsburgh. But in this case, he doesn't let the tackle completely wash him upfield. Takes a really good angle. Let me slow this down and bring this back for you. Takes a really good angle. He understands the set point of Burrow here. All right, and he understands where to take his path with this bend and body control to get his legs out underneath him while he's fighting the pressure from the tackle. And he has his hand out to cause a fumble here. I think technically they ruled this interception. Either way, disrupted the throw and create a turnover. So two straight plays here. We've seen this. We're going to see him come off the edge and again turn and get his hands in. Really great stuff off the edge as a blitzer there. All right, so this is what I was talking about with the zone principles. You're going to see McKinney step down here. He's at linebacker depth in this particular case. Again, LSU's out here with three receivers. They make their adjustment. And ultimately, I believe here he's going to be the wall two player. 
So this is the number two receiver. He's responsible for staying on them. Depending on where they go, two goes vertical, stays right underneath, understands his leverage, and runs with them all over the field. You're going to notice throughout this, McKinney has some corner-like movement skills, and he definitely shows them in these situations. Clearly, Nick Saban was not afraid to put McKinney in man situations on these receivers. And LSU, as we hopefully all know at this point, had one heck of a receiving core. So I'm not going to get much from this end copy. You'll see it come across the top here at the very, very end. He's down here. And again, had got it worked himself underneath this option. So as Burrow's running, that receiver was never made available to him. All right. So again... Tighter alignments here. He will have some versatility, but want to see a play where he's got to catch a running back out of the backfield. All right. So we've got a running back going out to the flat. McKinney's got to work himself through traffic inside out. And this is the Kansas City Chiefs first round pick, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Uh, we just did a video on him a couple days ago. He is really, really hard to bring down in the open field. So not only did McKinney have to work through traffic to take an angle to a running back, but he actually secured that tackle as well. So you're going to see McKinney here. The back's already in better position than he is. He's going to break across, work himself outside, and ultimately secure that tackle by locking up the legs. Excellent play. So now we have McKinney here against Mississippi State, really understanding what it takes to be an edge blitzer in this particular case. little subtle adjustment outside right afterwards. Mess with the protection. You're going to see the pressure he gets when we go to the end copy here in just a second. So, again, McKinney starts with an inside alignment. They have an edge player outside. Then once they have this motion back into the formation, McKinney's going to drift himself outside, and now he's free. He beats the running back to the point. So really has a feel for timing and disguise with his edge blitzing, which we can see is going to be a fit. All right, so we have a scenario here where he's going to be down. We have a corner up here and more of a press alignment. We have a receiver on the ball. We have a tight end off the ball. So in this case, we've got two receivers. we got two DBs immediately here. And what they're going to have is they're going to have an exchange. All right, so two is going to come out, and the corner is going to ultimately take him. Number one is going to run vertical, now putting a receiver on McKinney. And what you're going to see here is one of the areas he needs to tighten up. You're going to see many plays where he's in great shape physically. But his eyes and his feet don't stay disciplined here. He's trying to keep eyes on the quarterback. But he's late to where this receiver's adjustment is to bring this back one more time. I'm going to slow it down. So he gets his eyes and body inside of the receiver. Receiver's able to get to his outside shoulder. And now he's realizing he needs to quickly flip and try to adjust. Here's where it is impressive. A lot of people would fall down here. And McKinney's able to stay attached, keep his feet underneath him, and actually work himself back into position to take some of those throws away. Some quarterbacks would not be thrown to that receiver. Certainly other ones would. But again, in this scenario, we have McKinney here. This is the receiver that's ultimately going to take this vertical. And you're going to see where his eyes and his body get after the snap and what that allows number one to do to get to his outside shoulder. Bring it forward just a little bit further, and then we'll slow it down. All right, so let's see him here. First, we have the inside release by number one. So McKinney starts drifting, trying to get eyes. Number one's going to break that outside. And now he's got to work to gather himself and turn. Great recovery, but a couple of things, if he can just tighten it up a little bit, Stay a little more disciplined with his eyes and his feet. He's going to be in even better position in a lot of these scenarios. All right. So we're going to have McKinney deep here. All right. Mississippi State ends up with four options. One, two, three, four coming to this side of the field. And when you have four strong, you usually get a little bit of help from somebody on this backside here. So you're going to see McKinney drift. Then he realizes he's got to try to relate back. So let's bring it forward a little bit. So he starts coming here to relate to number two. The problem is, is he sees number three screaming up the field, and he's not feeling any help on the backside here. 
So ultimately, he's going to try to adjust and come back to be over number three. And then it really gets special. As he sees the ball release, you can see him right here stop. He starts to turn. But at this point, the quarterback also sees that. He's got the ball up. And he's going to ultimately throw here to the number two option. McKinney's going to turn and intercept that ball. So he seems to have a real understanding in that scenario. Again, here he is. He's feeling number three coming inside. He's feeling like he needs to relate back there. But he also sees the quarterback clearly threatening right here to turn and get back underneath that. He has some really special skills. This is why he was a projected first rounder. He ended up going in the second round, fourth pick of the second round here to the New York Giants. Uh, many believe in large part due to his 40 time. He ran a 4.63 and then ended up pulling himself out of the combine with cramping issues. And he didn't have a pro day with everything going on, so he didn't get a chance to see how he'd do here. So here he is deep, and we're going to see a run fit from depth. Comes downhill with intent, gets to the mix, and he ends up being the primary tackler. So again, here's McKinney. We're going to watch this come forward. And at this point, he's going to come to fill the alley. Here's our ball carrier. He's got to work through all this traffic, sees that ball carrier pop through, and he squares him up and knocks him back. He was not the most consistent tackler in terms of angles. He's absolutely capable, as we've seen, an area that he definitely needs to clean up a little bit. So let's bring this back. I apologize. Let's get him marked up here. So here he is. All right, they're going to have the corner coming out. He's going to end up having to work underneath that. And you're going to see, again, his zone awareness to find threats. So he's not feeling a threat coming out, but we have number two screaming across here. So he's got to relate and get depth underneath that. Now, there's a good job here by this receiver of working back to green grass. So you're going to see McKinney end up losing him at the top. The ball does come in, but he's got a real knack for getting his hands in. What's really hard to see here is actually getting his hand in on the ball and rips that out and creates another turnover. So, again, here he is here to start the play. He's checking for threats out in the flat. This guy's peeling across, so no threat there. So he's got eyes here. Is this guy coming out? As soon as he feels like he's late to come out, he's working back for depth under number two. Loses him a bit there, but again, that burst to close and that knack for getting the ball out. Ball carriers are going to have to pay attention here in the NFCs. There's no doubt about it. So again, just some simple zone work here. He's aligned in this double mug, double A-gap look. He's got to look up, find the threat, carry him under the field. So all these things that we saw when we looked at Bobby McCain and what Patrick Graham wants, we're seeing a lot of those skills already on the table. And when you have a head coach and Joe Judge who worked with Nick Saban, got a sneaking suspicion he might have gotten some insight there as well. So let's take another look at some zone fits here. He's aligned here. He's looking for the first inside route. They have this bunch formation here. So as this thing works forward, here comes that inside route. And we're going to see him relate and match that across the field. Again, things we saw from Bobby McCain. So you got a head coach that worked with Nick Saban. You got a player here that played for Nick Saban and did a lot of things. You have a defensive coordinator that worked with Bill Belichick and Joe Judge in New England that like versatility, know how to use it. We just saw Patrick Graham use Bobby McCain in all those versatile ways earlier. And so this, to me, just, again, screams an immediate fit. This should be an immediate contributor. I do like to point out the good with the bad. So here's another time where his eyes and his feet are not tight. We've seen him relate so well in so many other situations. He gets a little bit lazy with his body posture. He's a little bit tall. And when he gets tall, that's going to allow number three to break out and away from him here and ultimately secure this catch. He just needs to get a little bit tighter with that. He's got the physical ability. We can see him playing you know, position, this DB position, much like a corner. Again, brings this versatile skill set to his alignment and assignment. If he can tighten up some of these things, uh, it's going to be a really special asset for the New York Giants moving forward.